we often get asked, how did Finley and Riley live so long? Well, in today's episode, we're going to share some tips with you. Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody. So, yeah, Finley lived to 17 and a half, and Riley lived to 15. And both great ages, right, for any dog. Um, Sadly, cancer took them both, regardless of how hard we tried to keep them healthy. Of course, smaller dogs live longer, so Mm -hmm. while we were thrilled we had them for so long, we do wish we had done certain things differently in the beginning when they were young, and we did an episode on that, so we'll link that. Um, But we're going to talk about how we got so many years with them. So... What goes, what factors go into a long life? Well, number one, I would say is genetics, right? I mean, that's true for us as humans and for our animals. So if you choose not to adopt a dog, because with adopting a dog, you just don't know, right? You're, you you don't know the genetics. You can do genetic testing. Um, But if you opt not to adopt, you're going to have to be very careful with your research and do a lot of research because you're going to want to find a heritage breeder who health tests their dogs and really cares about the soundness of the breed and breeding healthy puppies. Yeah. So this means backyard breeders, breeders that breed multiple breeds, pet stores, They're not good places to find your new family member. Not at all. And you may have to wait longer to get a dog, but finding a heritage breeder who breeds for health and breed standards will most likely mean you'll have a healthier dog in the long run. Yeah, and each breed has its own health issues. And so you want somebody that's fully aware of those and can explain them to you and that knows the health of the breed in whole. Yeah, so look for a breeder that does OFA testing and tests for specific diseases related to the genetics for their breed. So OFA stands for Orthopedic Foundation for Animals and was started to help reduce occurrence of hip dysplasia in golden retrievers and German shepherds. Um, It has since expanded to other breeds and other genetic issues and diseases from cancer to heart and thyroid disease. So if you're considering a specific breed, go to OFA.org to see what tests are suggested for your breed of interest. Then you're going to want to find a heritage breeder who is testing for those diseases and conditions listed so they aren't inadvertently breeding dogs that are passing on those genetics through their line. Yeah, so what's our second tip? So the second tip is food. Food is where we wish we had started off better at the beginning. There are so many dog foods out there, but how do you know which ones to choose and where to research all the ingredients? Well, there's a great resource called Dog Food Advisor where you can look up the food you thought. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can look up the food you're currently feeding to see how it's ranked, um, what the ingredients are. It even highlights in red the ingredients that aren't ideal and explains why. Um, but you can also research the best brands out there if you want to make a switch or, you know, if you're starting off and you've got a new dog and you want to start them with a really good, um, dog food. Yeah. So we suggest you start here by researching food for your dogs. You can even sign up and get alerts. So if, uh, something is, goes on, uh, uh, recall, it'll let you know. So it's a, it's a great resource. Yeah, absolutely. So dogfoodadvisor.com is the website. And they have a whole section on best dog foods on their navigation bar. So some of these include best puppy food, best organic, best grain-free, best raw, best dry, best wet. The list goes on. Yeah, they have a list for the best foods for sensitive stomachs, arthritis, uh, diabetes, weight loss, you name it, and so, so much more. Yeah, so it is just a really good website and it is definitely one you're going to want to bookmark so i'm going to tell you number three is going to be exercise exercise is key to a healthy lifestyle for us and our pets this is one reason why having a dog is good for our health it really is daily walks are a must and not only is it 
important for just the exercise, but it's the mental stimulation, and so is the act of smelling. Yeah, so um, I think I heard Victoria Stillwell, the dog trainer, say that it's checking their pee mail, which I thought was very clever. So you need to let your dog sniff on a walk. I know a lot of times you're just trying to get the walk in, but sniffing is where they learn about what's going on in the neighborhood. They can tell if other dogs are sick, uh, what they're eating. Um, and then of course there's all the smells that, you know, come about with other critters in the neighborhood, the humans. It's a lot of information that dogs process through their nose. Many dogs enjoy hikes or activities like games, agility training, barn hunt, hunt, lure coursing, and much, much more. So there's a ton of options out there. An active dog is generally a happy dog. And the more you do with your dog, the deeper that bond is going to be. And you'll be keeping yourself in shape too, which is, is, we all need that. (laughs) Absolutely. And don't forget about the importance of mental stimulation. We talked about that on the walk with the sniffing. But in addition to that, um, play puzzle games with your dogs. Play hide and seek around the house where you hide and call your dog or you hide treats around the house to let them do that work with their nose and their brain. That mental exercise is really important as well. Yeah. And and if you keep your dog in good shape through exercise, it'll strengthen their their bones their ligaments their joints their muscles keep keep them at a healthy weight and these factors will will you know make them stronger as they age absolutely for sure yeah so number four is titers titers are something that we stumbled upon when we were at a meeting for the atlanta terrier club and we listened to a presentation by a local holistic vet who educated us on titers for vaccines so what is a titer A titer is a blood test that will test for the antibodies present one to two years after vaccination is given. If the antibodies are still present, you don't need to revaccinate your pet. Yeah. Do you know that they give the same amount of vaccines to a chihuahua that they give to a Great Dane? That's true. He is not lying. Think about that for a moment. That's over 100 pounds difference. In weight, these... Dogs are so different. Do you think that we might be over vaccinating a little? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Personally, I, do too. I feel so. Um, each year, you take your dog in for their yearly exam and you get the necessary vaccines. And we did that at the beginning yeah, as well. We, we did it too. We, we fell into that. Yep. But does your dog, does your dog, does your vet ever mention getting a tighter? And we were seeing a fairly open-minded vet at the time, but never was a titer mentioned to us until right. we had heard this this holistic vet talk about it. Um, so in our experience with traditional vets, the answer was no. No one told us about titers. Um, you can expect a titer test to be a little bit more expensive than a vaccine. I think it was around $150 when we first got them. Um but in the long run, isn't your pet's health worth it? I mean, wouldn't you rather spend extra money and know that you don't have to give them another vaccine because the antibodies are present? Um, so we think we started titering around five to seven years old for Finley and Riley. And wouldn't you know that we never had to re-up their vaccines because the antibodies were present after all that time? So that's really a powerful statement for... Uh, the act of getting that titer test and seeing if the antibodies are present, they don't need another vaccine. Disclaimer, we're not veterinarians. This is not veterinary veterinary, uh, advice. It's just what we did. Yeah, it's our experience. So take take it for that, but talk to your vet if you have questions about it. Um, And know that all dogs are different. So talk to your vet about doing the titer tests. See what your results are. And then if you do decide to do this, drop us a comment and let us know if your vaccine, your dog's titers were positive for the antibodies and if they can skip their vaccines this year. Another note on that is every state is different with regards to rabies. So in the state of Georgia, we can no longer titer for rabies. Um, In some states you can. So do check your uh, local laws for that as well. Number five is limit chemical exposure. So chemical exposure is probably one of the biggest factors for cancer, and it's nearly impossible to avoid. Chemicals are in our food, our water, our lawns, in our homes, in our air. Sadly, chemicals are everywhere. 
So aside from researching food and going organic, how can we limit our dog and ourselves from all these chemicals? Well, for one, you can have a chemical-free lawn, right? So that's something that you can control or at least as chemical-free as you can. You can't control what your neighbors do and what runs off into your yard, but you can at least forego chemicals in your own yard. Yeah, and you'll be you'll be helping not only yourself and your family, but you'll also be helping the local wildlife too. Yeah, I swear we have more critters in our yard than our neighbors because we don't use chemicals. I, I think they know. Yeah, me too. Um, if you want lush green grass, you can learn how to have a chemical and weed free lawn. There's a bunch of information online, but hint, you need really good soil and Know your soil's pH. So um, essentially, if you have great soil, you can grow a thick lawn that will choke out the weeds and then you won't need chemicals. Yeah, and be careful when using these products because there are active lawsuits right now about products that these that, that humans have been have developed cancers and have died and, and they're known to kill weeds, but they're carcinogenics to humans. Yeah, and so imagine if that's affecting humans, what it's affecting to a dog. Um, So they're also contributing to the killing off of bees, which they're essential to us because if we lose our pollinators, then we lose our fruits and our vegetables, and, and that's pretty serious. Where else can we reduce chemicals? In your house. Mm. So you can use natural pesticides instead of chemicals as well as natural cleaning products. And I can't tell you how much I love using my water, vinegar, and essential oil cleaner. Our countertops have never been so clean. Yeah, and it smells good too, guys. Um, You know, and so peppermint oil actually repels bugs. Yep, yep. So does lavender and some other essential oils. Just be careful to make sure which ones are acceptable to use with pets, Um, especially cats are sensitive to certain ones. But peppermint and lavender are generally safe. Um, You can also use diatomaceous earth. So it's a fine powder and it comes from these prehistoric diatoms that are in the earth. And there's a long, I could give you the, you know, Wikipedia version, or you could just look it up, but it's a super fine powder that you can put around the perimeter of your house and where bugs like roaches like to hide. So under sinks, under appliances, um, the, the powder actually kills bugs with an exoskeleton that come in contact with it 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 basically the the powder sort of gets through that exoskeleton and and kills them so roaches ants fleas silverfish millipedes all kinds of bugs Um, just be sure to get food grade diatomaceous earth because it's safe to use in your house and around your dogs even if in the event if they lick it so there is food safe diatomaceous earth Um, and when applying it, be sure not to inhale it because it can irritate because it's a drying agent. It can irritate your respiratory system. Um, we used Harris food grade diatomaceous earth, and it actually came with a handy little applicator that helps you get it into cracks and crevices. Um, and also if you're using it outside, like I use it around the perimeter of the house, um, try not to do it on a windy day because, you know, it's or harder. if it's going to, or if it's going to rain, Yes. you know, look at the weather before you, you put it out. Great point. Cause once it's wet, it's not, uh, effective. So they, cause then it gets wet. So it's, it's got to stay dry for it to get to the bugs. Yeah. And this is a great segue into our natural flea and tick repellents. Yeah. So number six is Flea and tick repellents. So flea and tick repellents are really important, especially in areas like the South where we have more bugs. But again, we want to expose our dogs to less chemicals. So we've done our research and we've tested products to see what works best. We've used several brands of cedar oil spray as a topical flea and tick repellent, and we've had great results. Um, they actually worked on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've used them when we've been out. Yeah. Like we've had it in the car and we've gone to the mountains like, oh, we need mosquito repellent. Yeah, so we used great. it. Um, and some of the companies that make the topicals like Wonderside also make treatments for your yard. So you just hook to your hose and spray across the yard and that will keep fleas, ticks, and even mosquitoes at bay. 
Yeah. Yeah, we could all we can all say we like that product, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the 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 nice thing about the Wonderside spray too is it says you can, you know, you can immediately go out there. I like to wait, but you know, and again, like with the diatomaceous earth, make sure it's not going to rain because, you know, it's going to wash, wash it, it away. Wash it away. Yeah. Um, and that food grade diatomaceous earth can be used on your dog if they have a serious flea problem. Just read the instructions, be careful not to inhale it and make sure to be careful that your dog doesn't inhale it. Um, so it doesn't irritate either of you, but it can be used on their coat. Um, oh, and if you have a flea problem, be sure to wash your dog's bedding weekly until the fleas are gone. Cause you're going to want to make sure that you're getting rid of any eggs that have been laid and vacuum your sofas and carpet. If you have carpet, you rugs, can, yeah. yep. Yeah. Rugs. You can even sprinkle diatomaceous earth on your sofas and carpets. Let it sit for 48 hours and then vacuum it up to mm. kill any fleas that might be hiding or any eggs. So, yeah. And once again, just remember we're not veterinarians and this isn't medical advice. We're just giving you some tips that we use. Yes, absolutely. So just as it is with our health and longevity, it's important to remember that we can only control what we can control. We can't control what's in the air that we're breathing in. Um, but we hope we've illustrated some ways that you can help your dogs live longer, healthier lives. While we tried to limit the chemical exposure um, to our dogs, ultimately cancer took both Finley and Riley. Um, we did learn from Ry our breeder that Riley's um, cancer was likely genetic. Um, in fact, when I called to tell her about Riley's oral tumor, she reminded me that that's what Riley's mother had died from. And I remembered because I had recently had my melanoma removed from my leg. And it was a couple years later when the breeder called to say that Riley's mom had passed from oral melanoma. So um, remember I said, you want a good responsible breeder? Well, I mean, look at that. She called to tell us about that, to let us know that's something to look out for. So um, that it's, it's really important that you find somebody that you can rely on for the entirety of your dog's life. Mm -hmm. Um, and as a side note, I just want to say, check your dog's mouse regularly. Yep. Um, because early detection is key. Yeah. And not just with sight, a smell too. That's, it's a distinct smell. Too. Yeah. She yeah. did have a smelly mouth, yeah. but also look for things because the smell probably won't come until it's maybe, maybe a little too, too late. late. Yeah. Yeah. You remember, Craig and Fred from from the book of the same name. Do you guys remember? Well, recently we learned that Fred had an oral tumor that was caught early and removed along with a portion of his jaw. Thankfully, they got clean margins and and Fred's mouth is going to heal and he's and he's doing well, so you know, we're glad to hear that, but Yeah, so send your positive prayers and vibes to Fred and family. Um, do you guys have any tips that you'd like to share that we've left off? If so, comment below and let us know the age of your pup or how long your oldest pet lived to and what breed. Because we all know that smaller dogs tend to live longer, but I know there's some bigger dogs that have had some nice long lives as well. Um, drop us a line, dognerdshow at gmail.com if you'd like to be on the show and find us everywhere on social at Dog Nerd Show. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We look forward to these every time we do them, and we appreciate every one of you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.